It is a distinct privilege and pleasure to introduce our 2020 commencement speaker, David Levering Lewis. Professor Lewis is one of the greatest historians of the American experience, and particularly of America's unfinished struggle to become a more just society. His research has ranged far beyond these topics to modern histories of France and Africa, as well as the cultural achievements of the Muslim courts of medieval Spain. David has a marvelous gift for storytelling, and his books are widely read in and beyond the academy. He is a true public intellectual. In 1993 and 2000, he published two extraordinary books that together formed a definitive biography of W.E.B. Du Bois. He showed once and for all how Du Bois became one of the most significant thinkers and fighters for justice for African-American and African people. And he showed why his work continues to matter. Each of these volumes earned the Pulitzer Prize, a unique circumstance in the history of that most significant literary award in the United States. Professor Lewis's career took him from Rutgers University, where he served as the Martin Luther King Jr. Professor for 20 years, to New York University and some of the other most distinguished institutions in the world. At NYU, he held the Julius Silver University Professorship from 2003 until his retirement in 2013. And in that capacity, he helped us envision what MWO Abu Dhabi could be. In 2009, just after he published his book on Islam and the making of Europe, he spoke about it in one of the first lectures at the MWO Abu Dhabi Institute. And I remember him holding a big crowd to rapt attention for the evening. Then in 2010, he returned to deliver the convocation address at the opening of our very first academic year. Ten years later, I am so pleased to give you Professor David Levering Lewis. Accomplished graduates of the class of 2020, relieved parents and relatives and proud faculty, staff and administrators and distinguished invitees and virtual platform luminaries and dear friend Marriott Westerman, I shall be brief. I know that what is remembered about the best commencement speeches is their brevity. But as I have the honor and immense pleasure <clears throat> of standing virtually before you newly minted global emissaries, perhaps my remarks may register uh, for their content. A few days ago, I took a virtual tour of your splendid Sadiat campus. When I came 10 years ago, it was a construction jumble of pits and pylons. I marveled at the central pavilion facilities. I followed the high line into your dormitory apartments equipped with everything but sauna tubs. My virtual impression is that your class will have availed yourselves of what is probably one of this world's richest material and intellectual experiences. Class of 2020, you are nearly 300 from 75 countries, speaking each one of you at least uh, two or more languages. 12% hail from the United Arab Emirates, 12% from the United States. Most of you chose the social sciences and 25% science. I rejoice that 19% of you still believe in the future of the arts and humanities. To be sure, your predecessors raised high the bar of excellence that your Rhodeses and Schwarzmans and Ertigans and Fulbrights and Clintons and Borans so impressively maintain. I carry a lifetime special memory of the seven scholars of the class of 2014 who traveled with me through their first college seminar ambitiously entitled The Two Europes, Islam and Christendom. And Carol Grant, your global den mother, assented to the proposal to fly the entire seminar to Istanbul in order to reimagine the 1453 conquest of Constantinople. 
I still have a photo of two male seminarians perched heart-stoppingly atop Istanbul's medieval Theodosian wall. Such academic wanderlust has been the signature experience of you here at NYU in Abu Dhabi. You are superbly emblematic of diversity, academic, religious, and national. On a September Sunday, 2010, I have the great honor to deliver this university's first convocation address. I titled it, From Athens to Abu Dhabi, Arrival of the Global University. Ten years later, at the behest of your gracious Vice Chancellor, I return to salute the bright, productive futures you deserve after four enriching liberal arts years and to receive NYU Abu Dhabi's Global Leadership Award. The person so honored is supposed to, quote, engage the world and celebrate its diversity and advance the goal of a responsible, just, and peaceful globe. I shall try to honor those inspiring global imperatives. As for you, class of 2020, however, I must tell you the future you deserve has seldom seemed more imperiled. This has been your island paradise, Jean Nouvel's magnificent Louvre, your local art gallery. Yet beyond the opulent sufficiency of these walls that were home these last four years is a world that no longer functions. Jean Monnet's European Union lies in Brexit tatters, authoritarian nationalisms, Trump <coughs> civil society, in Hungary, Poland, Philippines, and India. Religious strife ravages Myanmar and the Middle East. The United States, disaggregated by coronavirus and kleptocracy, loses her way. Climate disasters and water wars are the future. Naomi Klein warns of a soulless screen New Deal, as she calls it, in which chimerical artificial intelligence panaceas threaten human autonomy. Meanwhile, the globe awaits a silver bullet vaccine. And as I wrote this address, the May 15th cover of The Economist asks this momentous question. Has COVID-19 killed globalization? Well, if I've learned anything from my profession, it is that the future is never certain until it becomes history. Regardless of our fears and the challenges, the good news today is about you, because I wager that your class is uniquely equipped to provide the global leadership the planet existentially requires. As I close in saluting you, class of 2020, May I paraphrase Archimedes' last words in my 2010 convocation address? Give you a place to stand, and you'll move the globe. And so you should. Thank you.